today I will be showing you how to make these simple hinges. I will be showing you how to make two different versions, one that you see in front of you right now that is connected in place, and the other one is a snap-on, which personally I like more. The reason I'm showing you these are because they are actually very useful if you want anything moving that's 3D printed. So with that, let's get straight into this Blender and 3D printing tutorial. With all Blender projects, we start out with this cube, and then we can start customizing it a little bit for 3D printing. So with the cube, the first thing that you want to use, if you're using Prusa Slicer, I'm not sure if the dimensions is gonna be the same in every other slicer, but to make sure you get the right length that you want, you have to go down to unit scale and make sure it's on metric, then change the meters to millimeters, and then change the unit scale to 0 0.001 and that fixes up the measurement issue that you may come across when importing something into Prusa Slicer because if you don't do that then it will just have a different scale than what you think it is and that is why I always do that first thing and then when you go in and check that length button you can see that you have length two millimeters and if you were to put this in Prusa Slicer right now you'd have a two millimeter by two millimeter cube. The other tool that will be helpful for measurement is literally clicking or object mode and clicking on the thing that looks like a ruler. Then when you drag it down, it will tell you how far a certain distance is. So that is the other helpful measurement tool. And if you want to measure the angles of it, then you can click in the middle of that and drag it a specific angle, which I guess could be useful if you don't wanna go over an angle or you want it to be a specific angle. The first hinge I will be showing you today is the hinge that is connected to itself so you can't pull it apart. So how you do this is you just scale it more like a rectangle, then you loop cut it twice, and then you make sure it's even sides, and then extrude those two sides. And then once you do that, you can add a cylinder. Then we'll need to scale the cylinder down because we changed the units, and because we changed the units, the cylinder is set up differently and way bigger than we really need it. So then we'll get it down here and put it in between the two bars that we made. The reason for the bars is so that we can have something that's holding the thing together and making sure it's not coming apart. Then I'll rotate this 90 degrees, and then I'll scale it so it's intersecting with these this model that we made. And now you could see that it looks pretty similar to how I showed you in the very beginning where the thing was connecting and moving, or at least the one part. Okay, so surprisingly this would actually 3D print as a solid object, even though it is intersecting. The issue with intersecting is I don't really like to do it as much because I find it easier to work with an object that is not intersecting, so when I hit L and select the whole object, it doesn't just select the one section. So to make it so there's no intersecting areas, you can do this by either selecting that cylinder and then separating it from the object and then using the Boolean modifier, or you can uh, minus the faces as you just saw me do there, and then collect, uh, go to vertexes and select the vertexes on the side after I scale it to the exactly the right thing so that it's not bending and looking all strange. Then I can select the vertexes on the square of the face and the round cylinder. By selecting those vertexes, I can Alt F or Option F on Mac, and then it will have this weird, strange looking geometry, but it does combine it and make it work as long as you have it scaled to the right dimensions. Otherwise, in object mode, you'd see that it wouldn't look that great and there would be bending and things going on where the cylinder is. Okay, so now we're going to need another cylinder so that we have the thing that it's connected on. So how we're gonna do this is select the cylinder we already have, then duplicate it. Then we're gonna scale it a little bit smaller along the Y axis so that you have a size that looks good to you. So I'm gonna choose this, and then you also need to scale it a little bit bigger so that it's your 3D printer can handle this. For most printers, it's 0.2 millimeters or 0.1, I do 0.15. 
and this needs to be scaled on the X and Z axis. The reason for not using the Y is because that was the dimension that we just barely scaled to get it what we look wanted to look right. So by doing this, we just scale it so that it's a little bit bigger and now can 3D print after we have it more of a solid object and not super flat. So to do this, you can select P and then select by selection and now it is a separate object in object mode. Now going into edit mode on that object, we can add a cube and by adding a cube, we're just gonna make something that spins around it. And as you saw in the beginning of the video, I had the thing that you can hold and spin it. So let's just scale it to what we want. Now we can hide that cube and select the cylinder and separate it into a different object. Now that it's a separate object, let's select that cylinder and scale it a little bit bigger. Then we can fill the faces so that it actually is solid faces. Then we can go onto the cube and select Boolean modifier. In the Boolean modifier, we can select the cylinder, and by selecting the cylinder, and because the default is different, we will have a hole in it. And if you wanted to, you could have done this the other method that I showed you by doing the Alt F or Option F to create the hole. But now when I hide this object, you can see that it is very well a hole. And now you can choose to apply the Boolean modifier or not, it's your choice. I just do it because I'm not gonna need it again, to export this model as an SDL file, you can download this very helpful 3D printing tool called 3D Printed Toolbox. And this will has other functions, but one of these functions is going down to the bottom where it says export and select export. And that it's that simple. A link to that add-on will be in the description below. But now to the second hinge. For this one, I'm actually just gonna speed it up a lot. The reason for that is because it is very similar to the other hinge. The only difference is, is that instead of using cylinders, I use spheres. And I use the mirror modifier so I can get it exact and it's quicker for me to do. So if you have anything that you have questions on that you saw in the sped up version, then feel free to ask me in the comments below and I will try to answer. Okay, so now that I have my models, I can import them into Prusa Slicer, and you can see that they are both there. And then if I hit the O button to separate the objects, you can see that that one object, that one hinge that is two different objects that you snap on is different. Then when I hit the arrange button, it arranges it for me. And that's pretty much all I need to do. But one quick tip for you, if it's not arranged in the right way that you want, like if it's face up and you want it a different face then you can hit f and then select on these little circles and it will arrange it in that pattern for you which can be very helpful but now that i have it how i want it then i can hit slice and as you can see it works perfectly so all you need to do to 3d print it now is go grab the little hard drive that they provide for you and then plug it in export it to that hard drive and plug it into the 3d printer and then hit print So here is it printing, and now here is it finished. So when they're finished, they actually work pretty well, but the main thing for them is that now you know how to create these hinges in future if you have any reason to use them. So one other thing I wanted to mention with this other hinge that I designed is that when you see this one, you can see that it is on the verge of being able to snap together or not. And I actually had to push quite hard, harder than I would have liked to. So I would recommend taking in that to, into account and maybe uh, shrinking it a little bit more and only going to the size that you plan on needing. So you might need some calipers or something to measure it. But when I snapped it in, you could see that it works very well, which is the really good thing about this hinge compared to the other hinge, is the other hinge doesn't spin as well, or as freely. So one more thing before I wrap up this video. So this is something kind of cool that I created with these hinges for this video, just to demonstrate something that you can do with them. So what it is, is just a small little box that has my logo on the front side, and here is it completed. I thought it looked pretty cool. And how it works is it just opens up from the dragon logo part and then you can open and close it that way. 
But other than that, that pretty much does it for me today. I hope you enjoyed seeing this hinge tutorial. Hopefully, I'll see you in another one. But bye!